Hi everybody, how's it going today? It's uh, been a few weeks since I made a video. Uh, Taryn, Ian, Eli and I went on vacation uh, for 10 days to uh, visit my grandma's in the Netherlands. Uh, just got back here a few days ago. It's uh, August 1st here today. Uh, one of my grandmas has never met uh, Eli and uh, last time she saw Ian, uh, he was uh, just born, probably uh, maybe a month old or so. So it was uh, good to get over there and see them. And then uh, I have a cousin that uh, works in the Netherlands now. He just finished school not that long ago. And then uh, my aunt and uh, another cousin from Australia were over in the Netherlands at the same time as we were. So we got to see them as well. So that was uh, fun catching up with them, I guess. I uh, hadn't seen them in quite a while, uh, probably since my sister's wedding here, uh, probably four years ago. It was a long trip for uh, Ian and Eli, but they did really well. I think that the trip home was probably 22 hours by the time we got home from uh, when we left my grandma's house to head to the airport. But they, yeah, they did really good, better than expected, I guess. Uh, just thought I'd show you a few things that we have going on here today. Sam and Nasari are down there. We're, we're tying up our curtains here. So we're, we're taking this bottom curtain, raising and lifting it up and uh, tying it with uh, rope to keep these uh, sides open as much as possible and to keep them up away from uh, any mice that uh, could chew on them. We still occasionally will get some uh, mice chewing on them, but when we tie them up like this, we have a lot less of that. So usually we'll tie these up uh, middle of June or even beginning of June, but we've been trying something a little bit different this year. We uh, usually open that middle curtain and the bottom one, but we're trying to keep the, the middle one shut this year and see how, how that works in the barn. So originally we'd open all three of them and probably five, six years ago, we tried leaving the top one shut to keep more air force down onto the cows, keep the airflow lower in the barn. And last year we tried keeping the middle one shut and then about the middle of June, we opened that up and then we tied the bottom and the middle one together on that center. On this divider here. But this year we're gonna try leaving the middle one shut all summer. Seems like uh, the cows, when the sun really comes out, the cows don't wanna lay on this outside row of stalls because it's a six row freestall barn. And the main thing is because they don't want to be in the sun. So we're trying to uh, keep that middle one closed to keep some of that sun off of the cows. And you can see there's some laying down here now. Very sunny day here today, but even now there's uh, some empty stalls here. But it seemed like if we had all, the whole side open, that often there'd be no cows laying on the outside. And we'll still see that now, but it's kind of seems like it's helping uh, keeping that middle one closed to keep the, the sun away and kind of force that airflow down below but we don't want to close it up too much and restrict the airflow they're working at that today I thought I'd show you that quick they're also loading a load of milk here this afternoon we don't usually load milk in the afternoons but uh, usually they just load in the mornings but tomorrow morning they're taking three loads into the plant in Fargo so they load this one in the afternoon and then uh, leave really early, unload it, and then they come back and get a second load with the same uh, truck and trailer. And then just the one with the other truck and trailer. The cows have been producing really well. So we've been uh, shipping a third load, probably about uh, every, like once every week, once every 10 days, they're having to take three loads to keep up which is uh, good for us, I guess, but makes it a little bit more challenging for them. What uh, we're also working on today, uh, Victor and Refugio are taking uh, tissue samples uh, from our heifers' ears. Um, we use that to do some uh, genetic testing on the heifers. Uh, we're trying to figure out if uh, our heifers have uh, A2, A2 uh, protein in their milk. And basically what that is, is uh, it's either A2 or A can be A1. and there's been some research done that uh, A2A2 milk is more digestible and uh, people that uh, are lactose intolerant, that is, uh, there's some research that says that's because of uh, the A1 protein. So we've uh, started testing our, uh, all of our heifers coming uh, into the milking herd basically. And uh, 
Yeah, our goal is uh, to have our whole herd as uh, A2A2 uh, protein cows. Uh, quite a few of our first lactation heifers are A2A2, and then uh, the majority of our calves that are being born and on our farm now are A2A2 because we're uh, just specifically using uh, A2A2 bulls. Uh, there's a lot of things you can do with the genetic testing, uh, uh, but this is that's the only thing that we're using it for. But you can do a lot of things uh, as far as uh, uh, ranking your your cows uh, based on net merit, or uh, looking at what their predicted production will be, what their milk components will be, their milk quality, uh, even things uh, like their health, uh, somatic cell count, uh, the frame of the the cow or the heifer. Those are all things that uh, that they can see uh, based on what their uh, genetic genetic sample shows. It's not 100% accurate, but it's uh, getting better all the time. So I thought I'd show you that quick here. So we go. They uh, they have a list of uh, heifers that still need to be done, and I like to do this uh, prior to them going uh, into our calving pen, so that when they calve, we know if they're uh, A2, A2 or not, and. Uh, then we don't have to try to do that uh, after they're, they've calved. We can get them all here together in uh, one or two pens. What we'll, They're doing some in our far off dry cow now that hadn't been done before they were moved. But the majority are out of the uh, heifer pen that's prior to them going to that far off dry cow pen. And basically what it is, is it's taking a tiny uh, tissue sample uh, out of their ear using a uh, kind of a handheld uh, thing that's similar to uh, like a tagging device. To, uh, takes a very minimal amount and the, the, the hat cow or heifer really doesn't notice much of it uh, after you've taken the sample. But I could show you guys here. Uh, so they're, they're taking uh, a couple samples here now and they, they write down the sample and then the, match that up with the cow on the list and then we send that, those results off and typically in uh, three to four weeks we uh, have results back. And then we'll put that into our computer so we know which cows are A2, A2, which ones are not. And uh, yeah, in theory, uh, in the long run, if we continue to use A2, A2 bulls, we'll eventually have our entire herd that's uh, A2, A2, or at least the majority. They had two to do in our calving pen, so I thought I'd show you guys one up close there quick. I'm uh, back by our heifer barn here. Uh, just wanted to show you a quick update of the scale, how that's going. In the past, probably five, six years ago, we did uh, uh, genomic testing on all of our heifer calves. And we'd rank them, I think we were ranking them based on net merit at the time. And then we'd sell our the bottom end calves off uh, and keep the, the higher genetic calves. But we kind of went away from that. We're just uh, basically trying to, uh, uh, with our breeding program, just trying to get as many heifer calves born on our farm that we need. So we, we still occasionally will sell five uh, to 10 calves a month. But for the most part, we, uh, we've got as many cal heifer calves being born that we need to come back in our herd. So we kind of quit doing that. Uh, really the only, the only thing that we're using the genetic testing for now is the uh, A2A2 uh, test. And uh, I think we'll uh, continue to do that for, for a while here. We're not, uh, there's no premium for that yet, but we think in the future that could be a possibility. So I'm uh, by the scale here now. So they poured this, uh, poured this approach while I was gone and then they poured those blocks inside the pit and I did get them filming the walls uh, just before I left so I'll have Taryn put that video uh, in, this, uh, in this video here. They, uh, they backfilled on this side here that's along the driveway and then uh, 
partially done backfilling this side I think my dad was working on that he's putting uh, clay in there and then uh, finishing it off with topsoil that down at the far end there that's finished and this uh, this last little bit needs to go here we probably won't we probably won't fill this side all the way up to the top because then we're gonna have quite a steep side and it really doesn't need to be all the way up to the top on this side So down at this end here, if uh, he's got that pretty well uh, done here by the looks of it. So we'll probably uh, see this down to grass again when we, when there's uh, maybe some rain coming or maybe we'll have to sprinkle it, we'll see. They did put, uh, so there's a six inch pipe down at that far end and one here. So there's gonna be uh, a fan that uh, circulates air in and out of this uh, pit to kind of keep the moist air out of there. And then, yeah, I showed you that before. There's uh, drains in the bottom of this also that go to that sump uh, pump down there. Yeah, it runs to that sump pump here so we can uh, keep the outside of the pit and the inside of the pit dry. We've got this uh, scale shack, I guess you can call it. We need to finish backfilling this along the side. And then we have to build that up. Uh, plan is uh, to do that ourselves, but we're uh, definitely not carpenters. So we'll see how that goes. I'll probably uh, film that when we work on that. I have to get some uh, materials for that here uh, one of these days. I think I'll probably end this video here. I uh, appreciate you guys watching and uh, if you have any questions or comments, uh, I'd love to answer them down below. And hopefully we'll see you in the next video.